Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I'm very excited to bring you a review for the new Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation Trapjaw. Trapjaw is a new deluxe figure, the most recent to be released, and represents two different forms of Trapjaw, both his classic Masters of the Universe look, as well as his new cultist attire from the Revelation cartoon. So much like the Triclops, who was released, you know, just a little bit ago, he could be two different takes on the same character. Now, I haven't gone in on, like, buying two of them yet. I might change my mind, depending on, you know, whether I feel I need both versions. Maybe if they go on clearance, I may pick, you know, an extra one up. But for now, I just have the one. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're going to take a look at Trapjaw's packaging. Then we'll open it up. We'll see the figure itself. We'll check out his posability, accessories. I gotta swap around his outfit, all that. Naturally, I'll be doing some group shots of comparisons today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Trapjaw comes in your deluxe size Masterverse packaging. It's quite large. You can see the figure right here in the middle, as well as his robes all folded up, an extra hand, and his interchangeable weapons. He does come with the same three weapons that his Vintage and Origins counterparts do. You have a blaster, a claw, and a hook. Now, unfortunately, this blaster looks like the tip of its little bent here, which is kind of unfortunate. Now, as is, Trapjaw looks like his standard appearance. You know, fresh out of the original cartoon, the old toy line, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the big difference, aside from obviously proportions, is that his mechanical arm is a little more beefed up than it used to be. It's not quite as scrawny. And that was part of his cybernetic upgrade when he became, you know, part of that cult of the motherboard. He does actually end up getting a second upgrade after taking some damage from, was it Teal or Andra? I forget, one of those two, and where he gets like a cybernetic eye. Unfortunately, there is no optional head to give him that eye. So the two depictions you get are, you know, basically first episode, you know, prologue, chapter, and then early time skip before he loses his eyeball. Bit of a shame. I would have preferred seeing him get that extra head instead of like an extra hand or something, but we got what we got. On this side of the packaging, you just get his name, as well as a little catchphrase here, Evil and Arm for Combat. On this side, you get your first bit of artwork, which is really cool. Uh, very similar to Triclops's, where you get kind of this portrait of his classic form, and then the new cultist garb right here. Looks very nice. And then on the back, you get some really big artwork of him using his little blaster to fire on his enemies. And we get his name, and we also get some flavor text here. It says, Half Mortal, Half Machine, the sinister cyborg Trapjaw made his name terrorizing Eternians. Armed with an array of deadly devices that attach his mechanical arm, the man with the metal jaw serves Skeletor as an obedient weapon of destruction. With Skeletor gone, Trapjaw serves a new master now, Triclops of the technical cult-worshipping motherboard. It's a pretty lengthy ride up there, a lot better than you get for most packaging. Now his cross cells are interesting because they're kind of all over the place. You can see you've got your Savage He-Man and Faker, which are two other deluxe figures. And then you get a mixture of Wave 2 and Wave 4 figures. You get Andra and Stinkor from Wave 2, and then you also get Tila and Merman from Wave 4, which isn't even out yet. So a really interesting mix there. It wasn't all just one wave. So that's the packaging. Very nice as always. Love the Motu artwork. I mean, they really pull out all the stops there. So now, let's go ahead and open this up. Now we get to see Trapjaw out of the package, and you get all of his accessories laid out here, with two of them hanging on his waist. So you get his cultist robe, you get the mantle, you get the belt for the robe, you get the open hand, or traditional hand there. And then over here, you can see we have his hook and his claw hanging off his belt. Now one thing I'm not crazy about is that unlike the uh, vintage toy or the Origins toy, the belt loops to hold his stuff on are like right at the side instead of being angled back. So that puts his stuff right here along his hips, which really creates some clearance issues. Like even with the items turned toward the back like this, he's kind of got some saddlebags going on. And it does, you know, limit the, his ability to move his arms, put him down. He can't lift his legs up very well. So that's something that I, I don't understand why they built it that way. Like why they didn't just put those loops further back, like on the classic toy. But... That's what they did. Now this weapon holding hand that he comes packaged with, it's useful if you have additional weapons, but there's nothing of his he can actually wield with this. So personally, I find this one to be kind of useless. I'd rather just attach the more open hand, more classic one. If I put that on there, I think it looks a lot better. So there we go. 
Looks a little more retro, a little more vintage. Now getting a good look at the figure, you can see he's got all your standard articulation. He's got the double ball jointed neck. He has a universal shoulder here on this arm, bicep swivel. He does only have a single bend elbow, but that's just due to the you know, mechanical nature of this arm. This one does have the double bend, which is nice. It works quite well. It was a little tight when I got out of the package, but once you exercise the joint a little bit, it's usually fine. He's got the ball joint on the upper torso, the waist swivel. He's got the universal hips, thigh swivel, double bend knees, as you can see. He's got that boot swivel, ankle rocking, and rotation. So pretty much your standard fare as far as his posability and all that. Uh, he also has the opening and closing jaw, which is you know classic. Now one thing I'm not crazy about, let's open this all the way. Look at his face. <laughs> this is not somebody that I would take very seriously. So trap jaw is typically depicted as just missing his entire lower jaw, which is why he has a mechanical one. It's usually just kind of a void there. And he's also usually shown having sharp upper teeth. For some reason with Revelation and with this toy, they decided to give him just like a normal set of choppers right here, which is much less cool looking, but then also give him some kind of a diminished jaw here. It looks like maybe the bone's missing, but the flesh is still there. And then he's got his tongue hanging down. And that might, you know, make him a little more disturbing looking, but a lot less cool. Uh, I really prefer the classic look of just, you know, having no lower jaw or anything there. And then just having this bear trap like thing. Um, I don't really like the way the face looks. Now, interestingly, you know, this seems to be based off his control art for the show. But in the control art, all this, instead of being green, was more of like a pink, fleshy color. So, you know, it looked more like just useless muscles and stuff hanging down, which I think would have made this look a lot less ridiculous because this doesn't look so much like his jaw or jawbone are missing, but more so that he's just got a goofy looking little face with like no lower teeth. So I, I can't say I'm crazy about that choice. It looks very strange to me. So you can bet that when I display my guy, this jaw is gonna be blocking all that ugliness. Have it open a little bit, but not enough to where I can see all that stuff hanging down because I, I really don't like the look of it. it. It just makes him look goofy. I can't say I'm a fan. Now to look at his interchangeable parts, you can see that his machine gun arm thing looks pretty much like the original. Now, you know, when I first saw this, I wondered, are these compatible with the old trap jaw toy? And unfortunately, they're not because they kind of take the opposite approach of that toy where that toy had a hole in the mechanical arm and pegs on the weapons, he reverses that trend. So he's got the peg here and holes. Um, now this, this machine gun arm goes on and off pretty easily. However, when you get to the claw, there's a lot more friction to put that down. So I recommend turning it in one direction as you slowly press it on there. There you go, like that. Because I'm not sure how sturdy that little little like pin looking thing is. Um, I don't know why that accessory is so tight when the gun arm isn't, but you know, it's just something that hopefully as you work it on there and play with it, it'll loosen up. But it also worries me that that little piece might snap off similarly to the wrist peg for my Revelation Moss Man. So time will tell if this is a bad design choice or not. Um, personally, I think this claw is my favorite attachment. Just very wicked looking, and it's a lot cooler than the classic one, which you know we'll see here in a moment. For one, it's a good deal larger and doesn't look quite so puny, and also it's just got this really cool, like serrated look to it. Kind of looks like a giant set of mandibles. Just very wicked looking, and I'm assuming that's just part of his mechanical upgrade he got from joining the motherboard cult. All right, so take this one off, and you really want to remove it the same way you put it on. Just turn and slide it down till it gives. And the last one is his hook, which is not too different from the classic hook. It is a bit bigger and more detailed looking. And this one's also quite tight, so you want to do the same thing. Just kind of push and twist and try not to like bend it as you go because that's how you're going to snap that thing off. All right, and then you get his hook, which is nicely colored this time around, not all just one color. Pretty cool looking. Probably cooler if you have it like this. And overall, he's a good, good update to the classic design. The only thing I'm really not a fan of is the face, but everything else is quite nice. He has a lot of unique parts. The whole torso area is unique to him. This arm and all that is. This belt, which really just sits on top of a regular He-Man belt. 
Uh, that's all new. And then the legs. I think every part of his legs is new tooling because, you know, he's got that kind of armor there up on the thighs. He's got these really big boots. Even the feet, you know, kind of play into that. So there's a lot going on here, um, which is really, really good. He's not just, you know, a simple partial of the base He-Man mold, which is something he actually very much shares with the original Trapjaw. He had quite a bit of unique tooling too. All right, now we get our origins comparison. So you can see just how the design has evolved here. And a lot of the key points are really there. Obviously there's some difference in shading and all that. Uh, the overall look is pretty much the same though. He's got his helmet with a little loop on top. Uh, the new toy trades out this singular line for these silver studs here. His uh, jaw is more of a purple color than just the same red used for the helmet on this guy. Um, this side of the torso is pretty much the same with that metal plate kind of grafted over it. But then he also gains a little bit around his shoulder here, which I don't know if that's grafted on or it's just a piece of armor. They both have this little bit of mechanical detail right there on the shoulder, but the new trap draws actually gets colored in. It looks very nice. Um, they both also have kind of a specialized bracer on their one good arm here. Uh, design's a bit different, but you know, it's still a green bracer. One thing that's interesting is that the Origins or Vintage Trap Jaw had this kind of gloved looking hand right here where you can see these details, these raised details on the back of his hand. The new toy actually lacks that. So, you know, it kind of fell a little bit short there. Uh, I don't know if that was, I'd have to look at the show again to see if that was a, a design change made for the show or if they just left that detail out on the toy and just reused like a He-Man hand, I'm not really sure. Uh, you can see that the little gun arm right here is very, very similar on the new toy to the old one. See how this barrel's bent a bit. Uh, mostly the same overall shape. They got that little skull and crossbones belt, but unlike the original toy where that is his belt, this guy, like I already said, is just wearing it over the standard belt since the belt and loincloth are all one piece on the Revelation toys. Um, color change to the loincloth, going from red to brown. Very similar thigh armor, and the boots are, you know, they have some similar general motifs. They're a lot bigger on the new toy, they're a lot more stylized. And then, when we spin around back to see the other accessories, you can see not a huge difference with the hooks. I mean, they're hooks. This one's obviously more intricate looking, but it's still just a plain hook. But I mean, I think the biggest improvement design-wise is that claw. Look at this dinky little thing. It just looks like one of those little grabbers people pick trash up with compared to this thing, which looks like it would just snip your head clean off. So I think overall the design has improved quite a bit. The only thing I don't like is that goofy lower jaw. Look at this. I'll drop this little bear trap jaw down so you can see it again. Let's see the little tongue. Looks like something out of a 90s movie going, what the? And you see this one, and they just paint it all black to give the appearance of there just being nothing but like shadow down there. And I think it just looks a lot better. And again, the fact that he has sharp teeth right here, as opposed to just like regular human teeth, I think really helps sell it. So personally, I think the new design is an improvement in every regard but the face. The face really bugs me. Now it's time to convert Trapjaw to his cultist appearance. So the first thing you need to do is remove his little utility belt here. So you just pull this away, pop that little nub free, slide it off, just kind of set those to the side. I would also recommend removing whatever weapon attachment you have on this arm because it's going to make it a lot easier to put the robe on. Plus I plan on changing out the attachment. And then lastly, yeah, rip off his head because why not? All right, so we take our cloth robe, interesting little sleeveless robe here, slide it over this arm first since this is the longer arm, get it up there, and slide it over the nub. Makes it much easier to do rather than having to stretch it out. All right, then you just go ahead velcro it up in the back looks like the world's scariest nurse right <laughs> so you do all that put the mantle on and you can reattach his head and then we do the belt and it just goes right around here there's kind of some like an impression especially on the back of the uh, mantle here to show you where the belt's supposed to go it's got kind of like a fake cloth fold in it right above the belt line. 
shows you where it should be. Just press it in there till that little peg pops through the hole. Adjust it, straighten it out. All right. So we get this. The, uh, the mantle unfortunately kind of pushes his head down a little bit. That collar around it gets in the way of the helmet. So you need to lean him back a little bit to get him to look forward. So personally, my preferred weapon or tool to use in this attire is the claw. I think it just works. Very creepy, which is a part of a creepy techno cult. So I think it's a good choice. You can do whatever you want. I'm gonna use the claw for this. So we get that. Look at that. Pretty cool looking, right? I will say it doesn't change his look up as much as um, Triclops's, but Triclops also has a much more intricate outfit and he gets a whole new head with that you know, pontiff-like hat on it. But still very cool and does look very much like how the character should for that portion of the show. Everything fits on him like it should. Doesn't really get in the way. Uh, even like you can stretch his legs, like make him do a split and the robe really doesn't prohibit that at all. The only issue, like I said, is just the head is pushed down a little bit. You can see it kind of popping down against the collar there. So you will need to lean him back a little. Uh, so you just have to get a little creative with the posing, but you should still be able to get some really, really nice shots out of this. For our final group shot, here's Trapjaw's cult leader, Triclops. And I do like how well their outfits coordinate. Again, Trapjaw is really more of an inherent and Triclops is the leader of the cult or you know, pseudo leader, I guess a priest, with their deity being the motherboard, who's apparently some kind of horde robot. I honestly really hope that the show gets picked up for a second season because I want to see where they're going with that. And I'd love to see, you know, the horde come back with a vengeance. Because that's pretty much right where they canceled the 2002 show. It was supposed to have like Horde Act, you know, successfully conquer Eternia and then, you know, have their whole resistance against the horde. And then they canceled the show. And that seems to be kind of where they're, you know, potentially leaving this show off too, where you get this, you know, new big bad emerging and then they're gonna like ax it. So I hope that doesn't happen. Yes, the show has its flaws. Yes, I think some of the writing and, you know, voice acting choices are not ideal, but it's still decent enough to where I want to see the story continue. So yeah, this right here makes a really cool shot. I think the two of them look great together. I'm hoping we to see maybe other cultist characters from the show. We could get Whiplash with, hopefully he'll be, you know, another deluxe with some optional attire. We could get, uh, oh, what's the, what's the exploding one's name? I, I can't think of it. The exploding robot. It's eluding me right now. But you know who I'm talking about. It's the one that self-destructs. Uh, I'd love to get them both as figures. I don't think I've seen anything on that so far in like rumors or leaks. I've heard tell of a Whiplash coming in Origins. I haven't heard anything about Masterverse, and I haven't heard anything about a... What is his name? Blow Apart, Break Apart, Blow Up. Something with Exploding. I... God, it's killing me that I can't think of his name right now. But you know what I'm talking about. Um, hopefully we'll get those guys in this line too, just to complete, you know, the whole group. I'm not too worried about, like, the little miscellaneous cultists. I don't think any of them were really remarkable enough to get a figure. But these guys would all be cool. And this completes our look at Revelation Trapjaw. For the most part, I do really like this figure. I think he came out very, very well. I love the, you know, the updated details and all that. I think his classic outfit looks really good. And I think his cultist outfit, while not as impressive as Triclops, is still really, really cool. And I mean, it works. It, you know, looks the way it's supposed to. My only gripe, really, with this guy, again, is the mouth, the lower jaw. It looks super goofy. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes, you know, what do they say? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Like, they should have just given him the sharp upper teeth, no lower jaw, because having the, the tongue thing hanging down, like, yeah, it does give him, I guess, kind of like a, a horror movie monster appearance, but it also just kind of comes off as goofy. Maybe if they had painted that fleshy area down there in, like, some kind of a pinkish color to show that this isn't just a regular jaw and he doesn't have a massive overbite, maybe it would have worked better. Um, but the way they left it easily my least favorite part about this guy luckily you can pretty much just cover that up with his you know mechanical jaw there so i'm not gonna sweat it you know sweat it too much i'm just gonna hide all that away but for some reason in like all the promo shots everybody had that that mechanical jaw extended where you can just see his goofy tongue and everything it's like boy you are not selling this thing well <laughs> like, that does not make me want to buy it but luckily 
I can put it out of sight, out of mind, and just enjoy you know the other 95% of the figure that is excellent. So if you haven't picked this guy up yet or he hasn't shown up and you want him, I think he's a worthwhile purchase. If you're a little on the fence, I would say go ahead and give it a try. Even if you don't like, you know, Revelation very much, just buy him as a really nice trap draw figure. Like you can, you know, throw away the, the cultist stuff if you don't like it, but he still makes for just a really, really excellent, you know, classic trap draw. So either way, you know, whether you like Revelation, you don't, I think there's a little bit of something for everyone. Of course, that is just my opinion on this toy. So now I want to know what you all think. Do you plan on picking this guy up? Or if you have picked him up, do you like him? Or is there something about him you don't like? You're not interested in the character, the show, the toy line, whatever it may be. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comment section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation Deluxe Trap Jaw. And with all that said, I will see you next time.